Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Live to Excel. In this episode, we'll create a personal macro workbook and explore some Excel VBA basics. The first step to mastering Excel VBA is to enable the Developer tab inside Excel. This will enable us to see both the macros and the interface of VBA inside Excel. So to do this, go to the File tab and Options. This could also be done by keyboard shortcut Alt F T. Then click on the Customize Ribbon tab and you'll see that the Developer tab of the ribbon has been disabled. Enable this and click OK. Immediately you'll see the Developer tab has been added to the ribbon. This will enable us to go to Visual Basic to record macros and to add buttons and so forth. In order to create the personal macro workbook we first have to record a macro and the place we'll save that macro is the personal macro workbook. So to record a macro, press the record macro button, but instead of saving this macro to this workbook, save it to your personal macro workbook. This macro means nothing, so I don't need to give it a description or change the name. I'll press OK, simply click in another cell or do any action in Excel you'd like, then press the stop recording button. Congratulations! You're now the owner of a personal macro workbook. That's great and all, but how do I view it? I'm glad you asked. First, go to Visual Basic. The keyboard shortcut for that is Alt F11. If you get tired of navigating to the Developer tab and clicking the button. And as you'll see, we now have a personal macro workbook. This is a place where we can store additional modules that will house macro codes or VBA script that we will be able to run from any instance of Excel. This is fantastic if you have specific actions that you like to perform in any number of Excel instances. You don't have to store the code in that workbook, but you can store it in your personal macro workbook and it will be accessible to you no matter what Excel workbook you have opened. The best way to start using your newfound power is probably to begin with the macro recorder. So by pressing the macro recorder, you can record literally almost every action that you take in Excel. So let's name this macro 2 in our personal macro workbook. And let's just do a few things. Let's select some cells. Maybe we'll even put a number in all of these cells. And then let's delete them. When you're finished macro recording, press the stop button. And then open VBA. This code was stored in Module 1, so you'll need to double-click inside Module 1 to open the window. So here's the first macro that we recorded earlier, where we only selected cell B1, and then we stopped the recording. Here's our new macro. You can see the range that we highlighted is written in VBA code. We selected, of that selection, we changed the formula in that cell to B1, and then we cleared all the contents of that selection. Is this helpful? Nah, probably not. But the macro recorder is a great place to go if you're unfamiliar with the VBA objects that you need to write in your VBA script. It's a go-to and it'll definitely help you in the future. Right now you're probably wondering, how can I run the VBA code? Well, there's several ways that we can run the code. The first way is by clicking inside the code itself between the sub start and the end sub which defines the beginning of the of the sub procedure or macro and the ending and clicking the play button you could also click the F5 key which will also run the macro another option is to go to the developer tab and go to the macros portion in there you'll see based on the workbook that you select, any codes or macros that are available for use. So in order to run macro 2, you select it and click the run key. We can see that the macro is run 
by seeing all the cells being selected. These are the exact same cells that we selected in our original recording of the macro. This really didn't do that much because what we did was we selected the cells, we added a value, and then we deleted all those values. So let's go back to our original code and delete that last line of code. So we only have two lines of code now. We'll select the entire range and then in each cell of the selection we'll change the formula to the value 1. So I'm going to click the play button and immediately all the cells are selected, which they were already. But then all of the values in the cells were changed to 1. Now that you've seen how to make a personal macro workbook and how to use the macro recorder, the possibilities are endless. You can make many, many macros and have many hours of enjoyable fun, if that's possible, with Excel. Thank you very much for listening, and until the next time, keep living to Excel.